caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry. And I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're now. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Caught up in your presence, I just want to. holy moment I never want to leave No, I'm not here for blessing Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than Just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. And I just want you. Nothing else. up so excited that you are spending some time with us some time to grow some time to learn 
Just some time to connect with Jesus. Um, listen, I, I, I have really enjoyed hearing from you all and some of the things that so many have been sharing with me um, about where we are right now, how you're feeling, because understand this, even though um, we're not meeting consistently in a building, it's still important that we stay connected. It's not just so much about being connected through a screen or through a service, but your connection with Jesus and your connection with us. So every time you guys share something with me, tell me what's going on, I greatly appreciate it. And, and that's what I believe that we have to do. We have to not know just, hey, God, tell us what to do, but God directs us and he uses you to help us find our path. When I say our path, I'm saying, hey, what are you going through? God wants to speak to your needs. God wants to speak to your concerns. God wants to speak to your pains because God is the answer. So that's what I think is so important. That is what's so beautiful. That is what's so unique right now. In fact, I want to continue on. Uh, I want to jump right into my scripture. It's a scripture I've preached on, I don't know how many times, but I find like right now, in this season that we're in that it's very important. It's found in Matthew 5 and it reads this way, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot and worthless. You are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. God, I come to you right now. God, I ask that you would guard my heart, guard my mind, guard my thoughts. Holy Spirit, you say what needs to be said. You lead, I'll follow. God, do what needs to be done. It's in your name, I pray. Amen. Oh, uh, hey, interesting thing right now. We're coming up on the Halloween holiday. I don't know, is it a holiday or a season? I, look, I don't know. Look, the, most grocery stores didn't already jump to Christmas, so jingle bills all the way. But, but here's the thing about Halloween. One of the things that, that is, is, is present in the idea of Halloween is fear. Now, I know we've been talking about God has not given us a spirit of fear. We have no reason to fear. But for some of us, you know, it can still be a little bit scary. In fact, I think last week I, I shared with you guys how my, my children do not have a fear of snakes. However, they do have a fear of something. In fact, I saw that in real time in our home. Um, Jordan and Hope one night decided they want to go to the to the kitchen and all the lights are out in the house. And they were arguing back and forth about who's going to go and find the light. They were like, no, you get the light. Like we can hear them talking about trying to figure out who's going to find the light. Like my two year old is arguing with my seven year old about who's going to find the light. And here's why they need a light, because it's dark. So, you know, the house is pretty safe. Everything is secure. But the idea of not being able to see gives you this idea that you do not know what's going to happen. So the only way to address it is to find a light. And that's what I want to talk about the most, the need for light. But the question I have to ask you, and I want you to think about it is, are you afraid of the dark? The question is, are you afraid of the dark? Because here's the reality. Right now, everything seems to be dark. Maybe not literally dark, but figuratively dark because the unknown of what's ahead or what we're going to encounter or, or the fears of, in our head of what could happen has us all a little bit on edge. And so some of us are finding ourselves in this place of fear. If we could at all costs, we would want to avoid the darkness. We don't, we don't like that. That's why we turn lights on in our house. The only time we want the lights off when we go to sleep. Some of y'all don't like that. You have a nightlight. But darkness has this way of, of controlling us and and really permeating our thoughts and directing how we live. Fear is very real, but in the darkness, when we don't know, that's what's really going on. That's why I read this scripture, and you've probably heard me preach on this scripture. It's something that I have to talk about often that God, I mean, Jesus gives a very clear example of who we are to be. He says to his disciples, he says, you are salt and light. So you've heard me talk about salt and light before, but just a little quick recap, salt adds flavor. It makes a difference. It preserves and it has value. So God says you are valuable. You're there to make a difference. 
and you're there to enhance the situation. But what I really want to talk about tonight is the light. He says, you are the light. Now, here's the thing. Light only has value if there is darkness. Right now, if you were to go outside, depending on where you are when you're watching this, the sun may be in some uh, span of setting. But if the sun is out, no one really needs the light. But when it's dark, that's when the light matters most. So what I have to understand is if that God has left me at this time and this place on this earth, then my function is to be light. And oftentimes we're more concerned with God changing the darkness. And God says, no, I have an answer to the darkness. And that's you. See, we're placed on this earth to set an example and to be seen, to be light in darkness. And here's the truth that the darker it may seem and the darker it may appear, then the more valuable the light is. You may say, I don't have much light, but here's the thing. If it's a lot of darkness, just a little bit of light makes a big difference. So that's what God is asking us. Now, I can put it to you like this. A couple uh, years ago, I was speaking at this conference. And so the way I had to do, we had to fly into a major city. And then me and my friend, we got in the car and he was driving me out to this camp in the middle of nowhere. And as we began to drive, what we realized is we have left all civilization. And so I lean over and I tell Justin, I say, hey, yo, why don't we do something like stop the car and just turn off the lights. And you want to talk about something scary? Like at that moment, I was like, hey, hey, quit playing, quit playing, turn the light back on. And then when the light came back on, it made all the difference in the world. But 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 here's the thing. If you're in a car, the car has light settings and the settings matter. Let me help you out. You have regular light and you have what's called the high beam. Now, the high beam is an opportunity for you to see further, especially in a dark place. It's a great thing. So here's the question. Well, then why don't we always drive with our high beams on? Well, we can't. That's against the law, number one. But here's the problem. If we drive our cars with the high beams on all the time, while we may be able to see, our high beams will become a distraction to everybody else who encounters them. See, here's what I have to understand, and this is the point that I want to make, that while God requires us or has called us to be the light, the type of light matters. In fact, sometimes we got to be just regular light and sometimes we got to be on bright, but we have to understand the situation. That's what I love about Jesus. If you hear the way Jesus spoke and the way Jesus talked, Jesus did not talk the same way to everybody. He understood his audience. He understood the people. He took the time to realize who he was trying to engage. See, sometimes we want to say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And more than being a detraction to Jesus, we become a distraction for those who are lost. See, it's not OK just to be seen. The point is not just to be seen, but how you're seen and what people see matters. Jesus said, you be the light and they see your good deeds and it causes them to give glory to God, not glory to me. And oftentimes, if we're not careful, we live a life where we're more of the distraction than the attraction to the kingdom. See, right now is dark. I get it. And there are people who need to see Jesus. But sometimes if we're not careful, the way we come off and the way we act and we become so dogmatic in our message, we become a part of the problem. I think of it like this. When when Jesus walks on the water with the disciples, you know that that story It says that Peter was in the boat. OK, stay with me here. And it says that Peter steps out of the boat. And as Peter is walking, he's keeping his eye on Jesus. But then he begins to notice the storms around him. And as he begins to notice the storms, he takes his eyes off Jesus and he begins to sink. And what I've come to understand is that the enemy will use any type of distraction that can lead to someone's destruction. And unfortunately, sometimes the greatest distraction is us. 
People are looking to Jesus and they get so caught up on us because we're the loudest. We're the most boisterous. We're what's being seen. And because of the way we carry ourselves, some people are going to sink. Because we've taken them and we've gotten their eyes off Jesus. Yes, the purpose is to be a light. But while you're being a light, do not forget that Jesus is the light. Yes, we can be so consumed with ourselves and that what's going on in my world that we don't figure out that we're still supposed to be making an example of what Jesus can do even in this time, even in this period. Jesus wants to work in and through us. Remember what I said, the God that's on the inside of us is greater than anything that's going on around us. So if we become the examples of that, then they see the Jesus, they become attracted to Jesus and they, in the midst of all their storms, keep walking towards him. We should be the light that leads Jesus, that leads to Jesus. So I know it's easy to say, let me put my life on high beam so I can be seen. But if we are not careful, we become the distraction. And if the enemy can use us as a distraction, then we lead to other people's destruction. So in this time that seems so dark, you are called to be the light. Light can't be hidden. But make sure you're a light that leads people to the kingdom. Not distracts them and causes them to sink. Here's the truth. If it's dark, then that's why we're here. Because of darkness, that's why we, the church, are here. Because light is needed in the darkness. So the more dark it seems, the more we should be concerned or consumed with the call that God has on us. Everywhere you go is an opportunity to be seen for God. Everywhere you go, every person you encounter, it's not about you, but it's about the God you claim to serve and love. Jesus says, you're the light and let your good deeds shine so they will praise our Father in heaven. I'm still convinced that God can be glorified in all of this mess. That's called faith. I have nothing else to hope on. That if God don't move, we in trouble. And so I find peace in knowing that may it seem unstable, that God is still working even when I don't see it. That God is still moving even when things seem stagnant and God is still my peace even in a world at times that seems like a whirlwind. And in that you can find hope. God wants to work in and through you. but stay in your place and let God use you the way he sees fit. Some situations, you don't have to be on your high beams. It helps you see further. You can see the magnitude of God's glory. But be aware who else sees the light. Don't blind them from the goodness of God because you want to be seen. Don't inhibit their connection to God because you want to be seen. But make sure that whatever you do ensures that your God is seen. Look, I love you. I thank God for you. You're valuable. I know I say it every week. We're coming through. Yeah, we're coming through. We're still moving. Guess what? You a whole lot further this week than you were last week. And we're going to keep moving forward. Keep growing. But most important, we're going to keep loving. We're going to be the example of what Jesus is and what he's doing in this world. Hey, keep those elbows up. I love you. I'm out.
strangers, neighbors, a but is one. Children of generations of every nation of kingdom. Don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage. Hold on. Be strong. Remember where I am. Praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean and pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Swing wide, all you hear.
He's in His blood. Jesus, light of heaven, He's my friend forever, His kingdom.